Okay, so today's lesson is on section 1.6 in our textbook. Um, we're going to be dealing with absolute value equations as well as absolute value inequalities uh, with respect to a limited domain. So we're going to begin here with the first question. Um, we have an absolute value e equation. So when solving this absolute value equation, we want to make sure that we get the bars um, out of there. Okay, so um, recall that the absolute value of x equaling 3, there are two possibilities for this. So either x can equal 3 or x can equal negative 3. So there's two solutions here that satisfy that equation. Now the same thing goes for this um, absolute value equation here. Either x plus 2 can equal 6 or x plus 2 could equal negative 6. So we set up and we solve both. And we get two solutions, 4 and negative 8. Now with respect to reals, 4 and negative 8 are both real numbers, so they will fit in our solution set. Now for positive integers, since negative 8 is not positive, and 4 is a positive integer, only 4 is going to be part of our solution set for this particular limited domain. Now in question number 2, I'm going to let you guys do that and check that with your answer key. Um, just make sure that you get the bars completely alone before you set up your two cases. So we must get the bars by themselves, in other words, get the 6 and the 2 out of there before you can set up your two cases. Okay, so go ahead and pause and then we'll come back and we'll do inequalities with a limited domain. Okay, so now we're going to move on to um, absolute value inequalities with respect to a limited domain. So I'm actually going to start just like we did before for absolute value with a pretty basic um, absolute value inequality. And you don't need to write all this down, but this is where it's going to make sense. So you want to make sure you're listening to this explanation. So I'm actually going to bring it over here. Um, so here I have the absolute value of x is less than 3. Now we know from absolute value equations we have two cases. Okay, So either x is less than 3. If I graph that, I have all possible values less than 3. Okay, So that's what this inequality would look like. So that's all real numbers. There's an infinite amount of numbers, but they must be strictly less than 3. Now let's just say I made the other case, x is less than negative 3. And I were to graph this. So I have an open circle here, shaded to the left. And now let's try to test a point in here. So let's say we start with, sorry, my dogs are running around. Stop. Okay, sorry about that. Um, let's say we test uh, negative 4 in here. So if I take the absolute value of negative 4, is that going to be less than 3? Uh, this is a false statement. And if you check any other number, this is still, any number inside this range here is still going to give you a false statement. So what we actually need to do here, stop! So what we actually need to do here is flip our inequality right here. We're going to flip it and say x is greater than negative 3. And when we graph this, we have all values strictly larger than negative 3. And if we check some of these, let's say we check negative 2. I plug that into the original. And negative 2, when I take the absolute value, is less than 3. So this actually checks off. OK, so I actually want to take a look at both of those graphs here. And let's work on combining the two. So I have x to satisfy this inequality x can be less than 3, but x must also be greater than negative 3. Okay? So what we're looking for is actually the intersection of these two, where they're going to overlap. And if you notice, they're going to overlap from this point, negative 3, all the way to 3. So this is actually what our graph should look like. So this is going to describe all solutions, or valid solutions, for this absolute value inequality. And you notice that it ends up looking like an AND inequality. So that's kind of a mnemonic here. Whenever you see a symbol like this, a less than symbol is going to turn into an AND problem. Okay, So your graph is going to have an AND um, because all the values are going to fall in between your smallest and your largest value. Now, if we work on perhaps an absolute value um, or question, so I'm going to change that and make that, let's do a greater than or equal to. So for a greater than or equal to, there's a little mnemonic as well for this, great or means you're going to get a solution set where you have um, it looking like an or problem. So again, we have two cases. x can be greater than or equal to 3. Or x can be, we have to remember to flip the sign, less than or equal to negative 3. And we'll get values that look 
since they're both shaded circles, it'll look like this, an or problem where they shoot outwards. Now if you want to test any of these values just to make sure, so you can kind of understand what we're talking about here, if I pick a value over here, let's try negative 4, and I plug that back into the original, is the absolute value of negative 4 greater than or equal to 3? Well, you take the absolute value and it does check off. Same thing over here, let's pick a value, let's say it's 62. So is the absolute value of 62 greater than or equal to 3? This also checks off so you know that you've got your solution set correct. So I would always go back if you're really not sure, just check some number inside that, um, you know, inside your shaded portion. See if it works in your original. You have to test it back in your original and you'll know you'll be, you're okay. So let's go back to uh, the actual worksheet, the note sheet, and where is it? There it is. Okay, so let's go back to this, um, and we're going to work on um, three and four now with respect to limited domains. Okay, so this is actually going to change how we we show our solution set. All right, so hopefully by now you know that we have two cases here. Excuse me. Either x minus four is less than six, and since this is an and, right? It's a less than problem. So we have and x minus four is greater than negative six. So we flip the sign. We have that negative number there. So we solve both of these. We get x is less than 10, and x is greater than negative 2. Now, when you guys are writing an inequality, you can actually combine this inequality and show the range here because x is going to be, oops, see my mistake here? I put a uh, less than or equal to sign. You have to make sure it matches up with your original over here, and this one has just a x is greater than symbol. So this should have the, the x being eaten here, and then uh, x is also less than 10. So this is showing the range here. Now, for all reals, so let's go back to this limited domain idea. We, um, for all reals, well, everything within this range here satisfies that it's a real number. So when we graph our solution, so this is the big difference here. We're going to actually graph our solution as opposed to put it into a set. Um, we've got from negative 2 to 10, all of these values here. Okay, now when we look at our um, second domain here, the non-negative integers, we want to think non-negative means positive, right? So positive um, integers, as well as the number 0, because remember, even though uh, 0 is not positive, it's also not negative. So we want positive integers as well as the number 0. So if we go back to our number line, that means that negative 2, that's not going to work. This number here, negative 1, that also won't work. So we want to include starting at 0, going on, moving on, only these numbers. I need a little bit more room here. So let's see. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 10. Okay, so rather than fill in and shade all of the numbers in between, because if we shade inside here, that's implying that that's part of our solution set. We only want integers, so that means we're going to circle, have closed circle on 0 because it is a non negative integer. We'll do the same for 1, 2, 3, and so on, up until we get to the number 10, okay? Now, 10 is actually not part of our solution. Remember, there's an open circle on this, so you can remain open here if you want, or you don't even need to include it, because only the digits 0 through 9 are, are neg non-negative integers that would satisfy this inequality. Okay, so let's try now this next example here. Um, here we have an OR question, right? This is a great TOR question. So um, I still get the bars by themselves, so I would divide out the 3, and I would have the absolute value of x minus 10 is greater than or equal to 6, so I set up my two cases. x minus 10 can be greater than or equal to 6, or x minus 10 can be less than or equal to negative 6. So we need to make sure we flip the sign and make that negative. So we get our solution here, and all right, so Either x can be greater than or equal to 16, or x is less than or equal to 4. Now, when I graph in all reals, this is going to be pretty basic, just like we've normally been doing with our OR questions. It's going to look like this. So it is an OR. It shoots outward. And for all reals, that's all we need to do. Now, we, when we get to positive reals, though, now we have to stop and think a little bit more, because this is restricting our domain even more. So. Um, for positive reals, if you test 16 <clears throat> greater than or equal to 16, these all qualify as positive reals. So we know that's going to be included 
in our solution set here. Okay, so in our graph of our solution, this would be included. When we look at this, though, this is saying anything less than or equal to 4, right? This section, this portion of our graph. So think about that. Once we get to 0, now we no longer are positive, right? So only this chunk inside here, anything between 0 and uh, up to 4, is going to be a positive real. So when I show that, I'm still going to have a closed circle on the 4, right? Again, everything up until the point that we get to zero is going to be a positive real. However, this is where you got to think. Is zero supposed to be shaded or is it an open circle? This time it's going to be open because zero is not positive. Okay? So basically, whenever you're trying to do these graphs, you want to make sure that your, your picture matches up with your original um, domain. So if I had had shaded, you know, negative one here, if I had shaded all the way through here and I test, you know, negative one, I test this number. This does not fit inside a positive real. So that's how I know that my graph doesn't actually look right. So you want to make sure again that you test and you look at stuff, you think a couple times before you know you, you put down your final answer because it's very tricky and it's really easy to get mixed up when you're trying to graph this. Okay? So to recap, we started off with some um, equations with limited domain and we just set up our two cases. We go ahead and we solve and then with respect to our domain, we write our answer. So you guys do number two. You did number two on your own. Hopefully you check that. Then we got into inequalities and we have whenever you see a less than or less than or equal to symbol, this is going to be an and inequality. Whenever you see a greater than or a greater than or equal to, this is going to be an or inequality. Um, the trickiest problem I thought was part B here when you get into non-negative integers because most of you are going to want to shade in between these integers. You have to pay attention to the fact that it's just saying integers. So we only include those specific values, okay? So that's the end of the lesson, and I will see you guys in class tomorrow.